Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today we're continuing with Matt Powell's The Atheist Religion video. This one is about dinosaurs. If dinosaurs are a part of the atheist religion, then sign me up. Dinosaurs are awesome. Let's go! Oh yay! There's a section in this one called Dinosaurs and Man 2! It's always the highest budget of films that can't think of unique titles for their sections, isn't it? The tricky thing about Schreitz's work is that she needs to get her hands on the insides of dinosaur bones. Oh yay! Soft tissue! How exciting! Yes, soft tissue was found. After the hard parts of the fossil were dissolved in an acid bath. That's when they found tiny particles that were pliable and resembled certain tissues like collagen. Now, this find has been lobbed back and forth between being most likely genuine and most likely contamination, with scientists immediately suspecting contamination when it was first published in 2005, followed by Schwartz in 2013 demonstrating the preserving effects that iron in a dinosaur's blood would have had on the tissues. Essentially, it reacted with the other molecules in the blood, causing them to behave like formaldehyde, thereby preserving the tissue and providing a likely mechanism for this preservation. But this was followed up by more suspicion of contamination based on the collagen found being pretty much identical to ostrich collagen, leading scientists to suspect that it actually was ostrich collagen, since the lab that handled those samples also handled ostrich samples. But more recently, in 2019, Schweitzer found more soft tissue in a new fossil, and described the fossilization situation that could account for such preservation of these tissues. Notably, at no point in this process whatsoever did any of these discoveries cast any doubt on the age of the fossils discovered, or the age of the the Earth in general, because we know these ages from methods other than checking for fleshy bits. It's impossible for these materials to exist in the ground for millions and millions of years, so this disproves evolution. How do you figure? That's the thing here, if you don't start with a worldview assumption, you are free to just look at the evidence. We know evolution happens for more reasons than just dinosaur fossils. We know the Earth is 4.5 billion years old through methods other than dating dinosaur fossils. If all of Dr. Schweitzer's finds turn out to be significantly younger than everyone knows that they are, yes, this would be a major shakeup in the scientific community, but it would not change anything about our perception of the age of the Earth, because that was independently confirmed with multiple other methods, nor would it say anything about evolution, because that has also been independently confirmed. And really, this discovery has nothing to do with evolution. Are you suggesting that dinosaurs shouldn't have evolved collagen that is capable of lasting that? long? Best case scenario for creationists here is that we have discovered a scientific anomaly. That is the absolute best that you can hope for. That's basically nothing. And proves that these materials are simply the remnants of creatures that died approximately 4,500 years ago. Nope. Before Dr. Schweitzer made her discovery, it was estimated that collagen could last up to 7 million years in ideal conditions. What part of that says the finding of such tissue means the animal was alive just 4,000 years ago? Dinosaur soft tissue is another example of the scientists ignoring the evidence. Here we have evidence that they're not as old as they say. That was one possibility with the find. If you find tissue that the general opinion is that it couldn't last for more than 1 to 7 million years in a bone that was found in a rock layer that places it at at least 65 million years old, that could be one data point that suggests that these layers are actually younger than we thought. But in order to come to that conclusion, you would have to ignore the literally thousands to millions of other completely independent, well-established data points that gave us the age range that we have for the Cretaceous period. The other options are contamination, or that an as yet unknown preservation method exists. Of these three options, the first one seems the least likely, and while contamination seems most likely at first, as more samples started being discovered with soft tissues, it started to look like there might be an unknown preservation method. So really what it comes down to is that we were either a bit wrong about one thing, or we weren't even close to being slightly correct about thousands to millions of things. And yet we're supposed to ignore it, because obviously if there's soft tissue, it must last 65 million years because we know dinosaurs were 65 million years ago. Well, 
Well, had the soft tissue been in a bone that was found in a rock layer that was much more recent than those particular dinosaurs were thought to have lived, then we might start questioning the age. Actually, in that case, we would probably have started questioning the age long before we found the soft tissue. But everything about the find seemed to fit with the 68 million year date, so the date was never really in question. Are you sure about that? Because the evidence is saying something else. No. One piece of evidence is pointing to three possibilities, one of which is that we got the wrong date. But when comparing the three possibilities, that one seems the least likely. And the truth is, they only accept evidence that lines up with what they've already decided is true, and they ignore the rest. So why didn't we just ignore the soft tissue then, if it's such a slam dunk case against evolution? The idea that scientists ignore evidence that they don't like is not compatible with the idea that they are coming up with these wild explanations to explain away evidence that they don't like. Remember, the people coming up with these explanations are the same ones discovering the evidence. Dr. Schweitzer herself has been involved with most of the publications that explain how this is possible in a 68 million year old fossil, and she was part of the team that first examined the bone. If this were such clear-cut evidence against evolution and scientists just ignore and or hide evidence that goes against evolution, then why did Dr. Schweitzer neither ignore it nor hide it? But we're all supposed to just accept that as science because they told us, even though they haven't shown us. The latest paper in this saga is open access. You are free to read it anytime you like. You can even check its references, look at their data, see pictures of the tissue in various stages of their experimentation. Sure, it's a technical paper, so it's a bit above our heads, but you can feel free to go get yourself an education that will bring your understanding up to a point where you can decipher the more technical parts of the paper. But no, you'd rather sit at that cute little dining room table in the cornfield, pontificating about how incredulous you are at the idea that a scientist would expect you to actually look at the science instead of throwing around wild accusations of conspiracy and fraud. And we keep finding it. Matter of fact, when, they, when you ask the scientists who find these things, they actually say that it's so rampant, you can literally go into a museum, pull out a drawer where these dinosaur bones have been for hundreds of years, break them open and find dinosaur DNA and material that's inside of them. That's how rampant it is. Yeah, really? Is that what they say? Because everything I've read on the subject up to this point has been saying that it is only found in the bones that are the most well-preserved. Is it more common than we originally thought? Yes, but it's not just inside any bone you feel like cracking open, and nobody is saying that you can find DNA in these bones. Well, mostly nobody. I've been waiting for this particular item to hit creationist circles, and I haven't seen it yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that Raw Matt wasn't just exaggerating and claiming that they found DNA when it was really just microscopic collagen particles, and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he is actually aware of this study published in June that purportedly found dinosaur DNA remnants inside a hadrosaur bone. But while the media is hyping this up as a dino DNA discovery, it is more likely bacterial DNA as a discovery just after that one found that bacterial colonies can survive inside fossils that are completely isolated from the outside. So you get an entirely unique line of bacteria that can't be found elsewhere, isolated inside a dinosaur fossil, potentially living for millions of years, and leaving their own DNA remnants behind when they die. But as this discovery was first published about six months ago, we are still in its infancy. After all, it's been 16 years since the soft tissue find, and they're still researching it. So there is still a lot of work to be done here. But at the end of the day, the same thing applies to this DNA find as applies to the soft tissue. Either several entire fields of science are completely wrong about everything, or we may be wrong about how long DNA can be preserved. But even if this is what Raw Matt is talking about, and I definitely have my doubts about that, the title of the paper is Evidence of Proteins, Chromosomes, and Chemical Markers of DNA in Exceptionally Preserved Dinosaur Cartilage. Notice the key words, exceptionally preserved. Does that suggest to you that you could just grab any random dino fossil from a drawer in a museum, crack it open, and find DNA in it? A lot of atheists, when they had heard this, they discredited the, the person who came out with it, a fellow evolutionist. Okay, I'm really enjoying the irony with this one. Yes, Dr. Mary Schweitzer accepts the theory of evolution, but 
Fun fact, Mary Schweitzer used to be a creationist, a genuine bona fide young earth creationist. But through studying paleontology, she came to realize that evolution is, in fact, true. And while she remains a devout Christian, she is no longer a young earth creationist. And apparently leaving creationism had a rather high cost for her. She lost her friends, her church, and her husband. Which is an unfortunately all too common story among ex-fundamentalists. And ever since the soft tissue discovery, young earth creationists have ridiculed her for supposedly ignoring this clear evidence of a young earth, when that is the position she started with at the beginning of her paleontology career. Even if you were to put dinosaur soft tissue inside of an airtight jar that was in another airtight jar and another airtight jar, deep time will always cause things to deteriorate. So there's no way that it could have lasted 65 million years. Read the damn papers, Matt. They're not behind paywalls. All you had to do was some incredibly basic Googling, and boom, you now have your explanation as to how they could last that long. Don't be lazy. It's lucky that it even lasted a thousand years. I mean, you look at animals that die out in nature today, they decay almost right away. Except for the ones that don't. Do you personally keep track of every single organism that dies on the planet? Do you know for a fact that none of them got buried in any type of sediment? No dogs burying bones that they forget about later? No mudslides? No floods? Nothing like that could possibly happen to anything today, right, Matt? Well, here's what the Bible says about dinosaurs. Now, remember, Job apparently never saw a dinosaur, according to these people. I mean, it is hard to see a dinosaur when you yourself are a mythical character who likely never existed. Not even in the wishy-washy, the character of Jesus was based on a real guy kind of existed. Job 40, verse 15, it says, Behold now behemoth, which I made with thee. So the Bible says that whatever this creature is, it was made with Job. It was the same time frame. Sure, I'll just go ahead and grant that the Bible says that animals and humans were made around roughly the same time. Though that certainly isn't a compelling argument for, well, anything. He eateth grass as an ox. And they say, huh, see, we gotcha. That's not a dinosaur. It ate grass. Sure, I have said that. In fact, I remember having a bit of a laugh last time when Matt read that it eats grass while showing a clip of a dinosaur eating not grass. He eateth grass as an ox. It's funny how you say that it eats grass literally as you show a video of a sauropod eating not grass. They dug up dinosaur feces, which I don't know how it lasted 65 million years. Fossilization, Matt, come on. At least pretend to learn the basics. It's actually pretty much the same as for bones. Rapid burial, preservation, permineralization. But they discovered dinosaur feces, and they tested the feces of the dinosaur, and guess what the dinosaur ate? Dinosaur dung is full of grass. Okay, Matts, listen up. I'm about to say something that you could really learn from. Pay attention now, this is important. When I said that dinosaurs didn't eat grass, I was wrong. My bad. Whoopsie. This was discovered in 2005, and when I researched the topic last time, I didn't have the specific claim of grass found in dung, which led me directly to the articles about the 2005 paper. So instead, I ended up at a lengthy paper that goes over the evolutionary history of the grasses, but was published in 2001, several years before the grass in dung discovery. So I was wrong. But it is such an insignificant point that it doesn't really warrant pulling down the video I was wrong in. I'll just go ahead and issue a correction and a pinned comment. So, Matt, now that you've seen an example of someone admitting when they are wrong and updating their view as a result, can you maybe start doing that when you are shown to be wrong? That falsifies grass evolving after dinosaurs. Gra dinosaurs lived 65 million years. Grass evolved 55 million years ago. Dinosaurs ate grass. Congratulations, you can do basic math. What do you think you are proving here? Grasses tend to live in environments that are not conducive to the fossilization process, so their fossil record is rather sparse. Dino poop is also rare, and up until 2005 we hadn't found any that contained any grasses, so we had no reason to believe that grass had evolved yet. Yes, finding grass in dino dung does falsify the idea that grass didn't evolve until the dinosaurs died. And that's all it falsifies. What point are you even trying to make here? Which one is it? It's that grass evolved before dinosaurs went extinct. Obviously. Why do you look so smug about it? Do you guys really think that this is some major blow to evolutionary theory? He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. 
Yay, we get to talk about the biblical dick joke again. I wonder if Matt saw my last video on him and decided to tackle that one head on, so to speak. Probably not. It moved its tail like a cedar. You guys know of any creature that moves its tail and it's as big as a cedar tree? There's nothing like that out there except a brachiosaur or a dinosaur. No, I don't know of any living creature that has a tail as big as a cedar tree. Now, can you point me to a Bible verse that actually says it was as big as a cedar tree? Because that one says it moves like one. Trees sway in the breeze sometimes, Matt. Plenty of animals out there wag their tails around. But I have talked about how the word translated as moveth there is a bit ambiguous before. Long story short, it could also be translated as extends or made stiff. And given the context of the next sentence talking about its testicles, it stands to reason that making it stiff as a tree is a euphemism for having a really big stiff dick when it has an erection. But let's also look at verse 18 here. His bones are as strong as pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. That doesn't fit with the sauropods, who all exhibited unambiguous pneumaticity. That is, their bones were filled with air pockets so they could be lightweight, and it helped with breathing. Doesn't really compare well with bars of iron, does it? God is nowhere in the law of thermodynamics. But you, didn't, you weren't really able to tell me what those were. Oh my god, Matt, him not being able to tell you what they were off the top of his head does not mean that you are right about whatever the fuck you just said about them. Unlike Ethan, I am at a computer right now and I can look them up, and nope, God is not in the laws of thermodynamics. Fair enough. To be very clear, science, not my area at all. Oh my god, Matt, you left that clip in the movie? Why would you do that? You could have just accused me of lying when I said that he told you that, and you could have accused him of lying when he said it, and it would just be your word against ours and your congregation would eat that shit up. But no, you recorded him telling you that science isn't his strong suit, and then played that clip in the movie where you keep coming back to science-related questions. Come on. Also, oh my god, Matt, is that a QAnon bracelet you're wearing? What is even going on here? Is this whole video just a Q code for something and that's why it seems so stupid? And that's it. The dinosaur section is over. It's now completed. At least he didn't bring up the Ica stones again. Shame he didn't go into detail about how he knows the cedar reference was actually to a tail and not a euphemism for a penis. I guess we'll never know. Today's comment of the day comes to us from Jonathan Ramsey, who said on one of my Kyle Butt videos, This guy always exhibits the best examples of argument from incredulous tone and from regional smugness exhibition. Well, before I saw Matt's video here, I might have agreed with you. But now that I've seen raw Matt in action getting all excited about grass being discovered earlier than had previously been thought, I'm gonna have to give that title to him. Thanks for watching. Special thanks as always to my patrons, Lynn Dobbs, Mark McManus, What Jesus, and all the rest, who are the grass that is in the dino shit that is my channel. If you'd like to prove nothing more than grass evolved slightly earlier than was previously thought, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per week over at patreon.com slash vice rhino. If you feel so inclined, you can also support the channel through direct donation or my Amazon wishlist, which are linked in the description. If you'd like to listen to my videos in podcast form, the link for that is also in the description, as well as links to my social media accounts and my PO box address. See you next time. Oh my god, Matt. Oh my god, Matt. Oh my god, Matt. Oh my god, Matt.